our second reading, we turn to the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, the first 20 verses. Hear the familiar story of Christmas Eve. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on peace earth among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Let us, God. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this night of nights, we come once again to hear a familiar story. We pray that you will break into that familiarity with hope, joy, and peace. Amen. During this past month here at Trinity, we have been considering the witnesses to the Incarnation, the people chosen by God to be there, to see, and hear, and tell. We have considered their story and asked two different questions. What does the inclusion of that particular witness tell us about God, and how does their witness impact our own 2,000 years later? We have explored the calling and ministry of John the Baptist, the voice crying in the wilderness and speaking hard words to those in authority. We have discussed Joseph and the risk of his yes to God's calling to take Jesus as his son. We have wondered with Mary at what it all means and marveled at her vision of a world where God is already victorious even if we can't see it with our own eyes. And so we come to tonight. We come to the night when we tell once again that grand story. The story of Mary and Joseph, yes, and baby Jesus, of course. And who can forget the angel backed up by the greatest choir of all time. But tonight, I want to focus on the shepherds. Shepherds hold a special place in Scripture, not to mention in the annual Christmas pageants in most churches. God is called the Good Shepherd. King David was raised as a shepherd. In Psalm 23, we are told that the Lord is our shepherd. We could be easily forgiven for thinking that in first century Palestine, the shepherd was a prized career. It was quite the opposite. No one went to career day at Nazareth High School hoping that their kid would choose shepherd as their dream job. You see, shepherds weren't trusted. 
being a shepherd, especially in ancient times, was hard, dirty, dangerous work. Sheep, contrary to their amazingly cute, cuddly experience, appearance, are not the easiest animals to work with. They're stubborn, often ill-tempered, and their wool has this oil that sticks to everything, and it smells. You aren't a shepherd if you have other options. This meant that shepherds were often migrant workers, lacking in social and political power. They were denigrated by their contemporaries as lazy, dirty, and dishonest. No one trusted a shepherd. How amazing, then, that God chooses the shepherds to be the first to hear the news that the Savior has come, Messiah, the Lord. Not just that a Savior has come, but listen to what the angel says. I am bringing you, you shepherds, good news of great joy for all the people, everyone else, to you, the shepherds, is born this day a savior. You know, there isn't another angelic announcement in Jerusalem at the temple. The angel choir doesn't wake up the high priest and the governor and the ruling class to let them know about the appearance of baby Jesus. There are no lights or inflatables or traffic jams on the way to Christmas Eve service. The message is brought by God to one group outside Jesus' immediate family. The dirty, dishonest, lazy, sleeping in the fields, covered in sheep goo, shepherds. So they go, with haste, we are told, and they find Mary and Joseph and the baby, and then they tell everyone who will listen what they've been told by the angel. And there is amazement and wonder, and Mary treasures it all. And then back to the fields they go, back to their sheep, filled with joy and praise. So on this night, I wonder, what does this tell us about God? Well, for me, it tells me that God doesn't call the expected, or the powerful, or the well-educated, or the rightly trained to do the work of the kingdom. But instead, God calls those who are open to hearing the word of the angel. And so I wonder for us if we are willing to listen to all voices, not just those that we expect to be holy, not just those that wear weird clothes when we come to church. Do we open ourselves to the voice of God proclaiming the new life in our midst tonight? So amid the light and the joy and the peace of this holiday season, may we keep our ears open, our eyes open, and our hearts attuned to the joy that comes in unexpected ways.